I've been swimming since I was a small child, but I don't have any formal training in it. I can swim around and play in shallow water, but some of what I used to do is just downright dangerous, like swimming with my snorkel in my mouth or letting air out to relieve CO2 pressure. I'm entirely self-taught, so I don't have any of the skills or confidence to safely push the boundaries and dive deeply. I need real training. So I went to Shaliocho to find Nikki. You might recognize him from that time we were discovered to be undercover spies. Eight years undercover. Or when we ran ran into a herd of wild buffalo while river tracing. He is a champion free diver. He can hold his breath for five minutes. Nikki is a certified freediving instructor and he's going to teach me how to freedive. We're going to learn A.2, which is divided into indoor and outdoor classes. In the indoor portion, we just familiarize ourselves with the human body. We talk about blood oxygen, basic breathing, and how your body processes CO2. It's basically a high school anatomy class, but without any of the fun parts. If there's only one thing you learn from this sped up time lapse of Nikki teaching, it's this. Body is dive alone, dive alone. The main focus is to tell you that freediving is dangerous and to scare you into not hurting yourself. And never was there a more dedicated teacher. Here's a video of Nikki intentionally making himself pass out for his students. What a guy. This is not fake. He really did black out, but he's okay because his big brain rebooted and he immediately started breathing again. You can see how this reboot mechanism would be a problem underwater though. But we're not going to hold our breaths to the point of passing out. For Ada level 2, the requirement is only 2 minutes. I'm not going for any records here though. I'm the kid who's happy with a score of 71 because I know it's a passing grade. So I tried to get up as soon as he said two minutes. First time already, over in two minutes. Yeah. Before she... <sighs> Nikki wasn't satisfied with that though, so he made me do it again. And this time I was able to do over three minutes because Nikki got wise to my lack of effort and didn't tell me the correct counts. More. Yeah, so that two minutes. Really nice. I got up at 3 because he lied to me and I thought it was only 2.30. Nice! 3 minutes. Sneaky, sneaky. But STA passed. While I knew I could do a long enough STA, the dynamic portion of the test I was much more worried about. I've never been able to use fins correctly. In fact, I never bring fins with me when I go snorkeling because I feel like they slow me down. I'm just that bad at it. I should just get an underwater bicycle instead. Half a dozen people have tried to teach me how to use fins, but I've never managed to get a passing grade. Nikki is very confident though. He thinks it's because none of them were him. He says that I'm his soulmate. You are not need a instructor. You need a soulmate. <laughs> After a few training passes, I dove down and attempted my 40 meter swim on a single breath. This pool is 25 meters long. Two laps, 50 meters, a passing grade. This one I'm actually quite proud of because I wasn't sure I could do it. But now look at me, 40 meter dynamic apnea with fins. Pass. My soulmate. <laughs> with my classroom and poolside training behind me, we headed to the beach for an open water training. Nikki took me to Dafu Gang, which is the place that your instructor will take you when they aren't confident in your abilities. Because there's uh, not that much to see here, and the main reason people come here is because the waves are a bit smaller. Right after I said that though, we saw a large sea turtle just chilling in shallow water as we made our swim out. That's a good sign, I think. They really don't come to this part of the island often. Forty meters in a swimming pool isn't so bad, but swimming out to sea in this current is really difficult when you kick as weakly as I do. Nikki first set down a line at eight to ten meters for a test, but then decided it was too easy, so we packed up again and headed further out. I think that diving is easier than swimming in a pool because your own buoyancy takes you back up to the surface. The requirements for 8.2 used to be 16 to 20 meters, but then they lowered the minimum depth requirement to 12 meters because only 10% of the students were passed in the class. 12 meters seems a little shallow to me though, so I set myself a goal of 16 meters anyway. The four meter difference might not seem like a lot, after all we did do 40 meters 
meters in the pool. But at 10 meters depth, your lungs are only half the size as they would be on the surface, which means you can no longer puff up your chest to equalize. There, you need a transition between valsava and frenzel equalization techniques, using just the air in your throat and sinuses to equalize the pressure in your ears. I'm pretty sure I can do this, but I was unable to recreate any of the strange tongue motions that Nikki was demonstrating in the classroom. So the only way to find out would be to just dive down and try it myself. So I dove down, and predictably, around 10 meters, the equalization started to get a bit wonky. I tried a few different things and eventually got it, but during the experimentation process, I accidentally swallowed a mouthful of water. So I ended the dive after only 12 meters. I'm not sure how I was able to swallow water while holding a lungful of breath underwater, but it happened. I guess it's the same technique I used to hold my breath and then chug a beer at the same time. The human body really is fascinating. Now that I found an equalization technique that worked for me, I was able to dive down, touch the ball, which Nikki had put at 18 meters, and go back up again. 16 meters plus, passed. Do you know? 90 meters. The friend zone, right? Yeah. So I, I had to like try, because I'm like, oh, wait, it's not working, it's not working. Oh, do something else. It's working. Yeah. So I don't know what friend zone is, but I know when I get down to like 15 meters, I have to do something else. Yes. And I do that. So I don't know, I don't know how I do it, but I, you just do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I can feel it changes. The, you yeah, need, you need to it's different, something. right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Once you've got the equalization down, the difference between 10 meters and 20 meters is trivial. If you're having difficulty equalizing though, each extra meter is more difficult than the last. For me, I had pretty good equalization in my right ear, but my left ear wasn't equalizing as well. Nikki thought it was due to mucus blocking the ear canal, so we took a rest to let it clear up and went back the next day for the constant weight dives. This time, the ball was sitting at 20 meters below the surface. With my sinuses clear, I was able to go down to 20 meters, turn around, and come back up. But I didn't know I was allowed to touch the rope. Apparently, it's a requirement. So Nikki made me go down and do it again. And then I had to go down another time so we could film some close-ups. Filming is a lot of work, but 12 meter plus constant weight, passed. The last part of the 8.2 training is to rescue a dive buddy in distress at 10 meters below the surface. Swim down, grab your buddy, close their mouth, and bring them up to the surface to resuscitate them. I'm not a rescue prodigy, and I tried and failed several times to save Yachi. No matter what I did, I just was not able to save her. All students make mistakes, but I'm sure this can't be good for our relationship. No! We switched models though, and after a few dozen attempts, I was finally able to save Nikki. I dove down to 10 meters, grabbed him, pulled him up to the surface, took off his mask, and then brought him back with the kiss of life. Yeah. Almost don't kiss me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he's alive! He's alive! That's what it takes! And then that was it. I passed. Yeah? We'll pass my... Yo, awesome. 21 meters. 21? Oh, yeah, unbelievable. Now I have my ADA 2 certification, but the certification is only a piece of paper. What I really got out of this, thanks to Nikki, is the ability to dive deeper, stay longer, and enjoy playing in the water much more safely than I ever have been before. That's something that will stick with me for life, and the exotic and wonderful world under the ocean is now just a little bit closer to me. And for the first time ever, I feel like the fins are beneficial as opposed to a hindrance. I've got Nikki to thank for that. Yeah, I believe you can do it. Yeah, I believe. And if becoming a stronger, more confident, and safer diver is something that you're interested in, I recommend you look him up too. He does classes in Taipei and Pingdong depending on the weather, and you can find his contact information in the description below. As for me, I'm gonna go diving.